As the Allied troops in Iraq move to Turkey, many Kurds fear they are being deserted. Watching from their rundown political headquarters, these Kurdish officials wonder whether the autonomy agreement with Saddam will ever be signed. But how long would negotiations with Saddam need to drag on before the West pulled out of the region entirely, leaving Saddam free to do what he wants? Today, most Kurds believe the West is opposed to an independent Kurdistan. And many also now believe their leadership has failed them. At the Zako police station, Iraqis and Kurdish officials already work side by side, here handing out aid to the needy. The Kurds working with the Iraqi police belong to the Kurdish Democratic Party, the largest Kurdish political group. But increasingly there's anger at this sort of cooperation. After years of war with the Iraqis, many Kurds now wonder whether the Kurdish Democratic Party can ever bring peace and security to the Kurds. The people of Iraqi Kurdistan have been fighting for 40 years. This struggle has been led by wealthy landowners, tribal leaders. They have won nothing for our people and they have deceived them. Even today they surrender our people to the enemies. But a new Kurdish force is now challenging the KDP leadership. These are the Marxist PKK guerrillas in Turkey who have been fighting for Kurdish rights here for seven years. Inside a Turkish village, they tell these Kurds of the new Kurdistan, a Kurdistan not split by the Turkish-Iraqi border. High in the Turkish mountains, these guerrillas easily cross the Iraqi border. This summer, their war against the Turkish army has been fiercer than ever. With Saddam's exit, they today enter into the towns of northern Iraq with little fear. It has meant weapons and supplies have never been so abundant. With Iraq's Kurds unhappy with their own leadership, the PKK offers a policy which does not rely on support from the West. They believe the Americans are in Kurdistan only because they were forced there. But they do see the advantages in what they call the West's interference. <laughs> With this interference, the border between Turkish and Iraqi Kurdistan has been swept away. The south and north have come together. For our activities, this is a new situation. The Kurdish revolution changes. It enters a new phase. What the PKK is bringing to Kurdish Iraq is organization. All members are photographed and issued with ID cards. Kurds here have traditionally fought against Iraqi domination, but with little cohesion and discipline. The PKK intends to change that. Days begin early for PKK recruits, with six hours of political schooling. They teach a classic Maoist philosophy, class struggle, anti-imperialism, the need for class revolution in all of Kurdistan and women play a central role in their revolution. Unique to the Middle East, they study, live and fight as equals alongside the men. Azimi, a university graduate, joined the PKK with her two 15-year-old nieces. She left her family for a life dedicated to the war for Kurdish independence. Our people grow up alienated, even in our own beautiful country. Because our people are oppressed, yes, I'm sad. It's not easy to kill someone, but if it's necessary, I must do it. Even against one of my own family, I will do it. A major difficulty is the distance for communications with their headquarters in Lebanon. PKK leaders are now discussing plans to move the main base here into northern Iraq. It would assist with the planning and coordination needed to gain the support of Iraq's Kurds. Dilan is a senior PKK cadre visiting from Lebanon. She believes a new war may well be the only solution, a war which could involve the Americans. 
As their helicopters still fly overhead, the PKK is left alone. But they believe if a new war for independence begins, the Americans would oppose them. American imperialist policy helped Saddam's rise to power. The success of the Kurdish uprising put American imperialism into difficulties. Instead of seeing Saddam fall, they chose to prop him up. Instead of helping the Kurds, they chose a different political course. Concerned they might be seen as an ambitious foreign organization, Turkey's guerrillas have started a new Iraqi party. PAK, or the Kurdish Socialist Party, is an Iraqi organization with the PKK's Marxist beliefs. Azad used to be a member of the Kurdish Democratic Party. Today he regularly meets with the PKK, informing them of the progress he is making in the towns and cities of northern Iraq. In houses throughout the region, Azad has been recruiting Kurds unhappy with the current status quo. Pak uses PKK literature. It accuses the KDP of being a club of aristocratic landowners, elitist and remote from the people. Instead, they find their heroes in the Turkish guerrillas and teach of the need for a class war for total Kurdish independence. Azad took us to the White Mountains outside Dehuk, where he says his forces have been since the uprising. After the uprising, many comrades fled to the mountains. They are preparing for the war. They are spread throughout Kurdistan. He took us through the gardens of villages bombed by Saddam in 1988. A lookout reveals the well-hidden Pak guerrilla camp. Here these Iraqis live a Spartan existence, eating what they can find in the mountains. Pak blames the KDP leadership for the panic that led to the Kurdish refugee crisis. Today Azad says Iraqi Kurds know better, with more arriving to join Pak's forces each day. The badges they wear give away the PKK's influence, their dedication to a class war. This war which the people will wage will be under the people's command, for the people, and on their initiative. The people should know why they are fighting and what for, just like the war which was fought in Vietnam and China. As Pak trains for a new Kurdish war, it is clear that whether or not Saddam agrees to autonomy, the region is unlikely to see peace in the near future.